I will in this video demonstrate how first left heart failure is created and shown with pressure volume loops from uh, left ventricle in red, right ventricle in yellow, and in brown pressure volume loops from the left atrium, and in blue pressure volume loops from the right atrium. And after creating heart failure, I will show the interactions between left and right heart function, first without venoarterial ECMO and then with venoarterial ECMO. So I start by reducing left ventricular contractility, approaching a low cardiac output state with preserved right heart function. You see that left ventricular loops, they move to the right meaning dilatation of the left ventricle. Also we have dilatation of the left atrium and increasing left atrial pressures. Uh, to create biventricular failure I also decrease contractility of the right ventricle. We can see that the yellow loops are moving to the right, meaning dilating left and right ventricle. Actually, the left ventricle becomes slightly smaller since they are competing of the space within the pericardial sac. And in this situation, we have a very modest increase in left atrial pressure, uh, somewhere between 10 and 15 millimeters of, of mercury. Uh, I will now increase right heart function and then please notice what happens with left ventricular loading and left atrial pressures. So I start to increase right heart function now. You see that output of the right heart increases and in parallel with that we see a slight dilatation of the left ventricle and a very pronounced increase in left atrial pressures. So this means that uh, right ventricular function determines to a large extent left atrial pressures. I will now go back to a state of biventricular failure by again reducing right ventricular function. You see that that also reverts left atrial pressure increase. Just waiting a few seconds for, for a steady state and then I'll start venoarterial ECMO. Flow is now about one liter and I'll move up to two liters and at 3,600 RPMs, I'm pumping about three and a half liter. The immediate effect was further dilatation of the left ventricle and an increase in left atrial pressure. And I will now demonstrate what happens when we modify right ventricular function. So we are starting with a very bad right ventricular function, but I now, now start to increase contractility. You see the yellow loop uh, showing uh, less dilatation of the right ventricle and with increase in right ventricular function we see some dilatation of the left ventricle and a fairly pronounced increase in left atrial pressure and left atrial dilatation. So, this confirms that left atrial pressures cannot be considered as measures solely of left heart function, but is highly influenced by right ventricular function. Thank you.